Hello, we are here at the Institut Lorenz of Leiden University. My name is Carlo Beinacker, and I will introduce uh, the class of today to you. There are two, po two topics which are the content of this class two signature effects of topological superconductivity. The first is this thing which is called the 4 pi periodic Josephson effect. And then there is the, the Majorana zero mode, the, the, the resonant conduction of Majorana zero modes. And what I would like to do in the next couple of minutes is explain to you that these are not two separate effects, but are, you could say, two sides of the same coin. It's, it's one characteristic of topological superconductors which you can observe in two different ways. And to do that I would like to consider a, a ring, a superconducting ring, enclosing a, a flux phi, there's a magnetic field, the ring encloses a flux, there's a little barrier here. This is what we call a, a Joseon junction. And typically when we have these things, the Joseon junction, instead of working with the, the flux through the ring, we like to speak about the phase difference across the junction, but they're just directly related so that a, a phase increment of 2 pi corresponds to a flux increment of h over 2e. You will recall that the flux quantum in superconductivity is Planck's constant divided by the charge of the Cooper pair, 2e. So we can either say that, that there is a flux phi, or we can say that there's a phase difference phi, it's really the same thing. And then we can ask what is the, the, the spectrum, the excitation spectrum of this Joseon junction. And this has a structure which we've encountered before. So there's an energy axis. In this case there is a, a phase or a flux axis. The spectrum has this particle hole plus or minus E symmetry, so every level here is mirrored by a level down here. And then it winds around, and, and there can be level crossings. Level crossings at E is zero, that's the Fermi level. And in, in, in a Joseon junction with broken time reversal symmetry, these crossings can exist. And in this case, there's, there's two crossings, there's an even number of them, and that's, you could say, the generic thing. Why is it the thing you would expect? Because if I follow one level by winding the phase slowly, incrementing the flux very slowly, I would follow this line and after a phase increment of 2 pi, I'm back where I started. So in this particular case here, all the properties of this junction are periodic in the phase in units of 2 pi, or alternatively you could say they're periodic in the flux in units of h over 2e, and that's, the, that's how superconductors should behave. But now there is another, certainly another mathematical possibility, whether it's realized in nature, that's of course the next thing to, to think about, but certainly mathematically it's possible that the spectrum doesn't look like this, but looks like this. So what's the difference? Well, it looks different, but the, 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 the topological difference is that this has an odd number of level crossings, one. This has two level crossings, here there's just one level crossing. So now if I follow this level slowly, adiabatically, and I wind the phase by 2 pi, I'm not back. I have to wind another 2 pi, and so the periodicity of the properties of this Joseon junction are periodic in phase in units of 4 pi, or in the flux, the corresponding flux periodicity would be h over e. And that's very strange because this is superconductivity and the single charge shouldn't appear. Everything should be in units of the Cooper pair charge, 2e. So this is an anomaly, and this anomaly is called a, a topological or topologically non-trivial superconductor. And this effect here, that the periodicity of the Josephson effect is 4 pi instead of 2 pi, that's what's called the 4 pi periodic Josephson effect. That's the first, the first signature, key signature of topological superconductivity. Now we to turn to the second signature, which is the appearance of these, these zero modes, these Majorana resonance at zero energy. To, to start, to arrive at these starting from this picture, I would take this junction here and I would make the barrier higher and higher. Basically I'm cutting the ring. You know, once I've cut it, I can even think that it's a wire, that doesn't matter. So I'm cutting the ring. What happens if we cut the ring? Well, first of all, there can be no flux dependence if you cut the ring. If you cut the ring, it doesn't, you could even imagine straightening it out into a wire. It doesn't know about the flux. So everything becomes flat. 
and also the levels are pushed up to the, to the, to the gap. If, once you cut the ring, there's no reason why there would be levels inside the gap. And so what will happen here is that these two crossings, they will come together, they will annihilate pairwise, they can do that, they will annihilate pairwise, and then one level will go up, one level will go down, and so when you've made this barrier really high, you'll find that there's one level up here, basically flux independence, and there's another level down here, basically flux independence. Now for the topological superconductor. It cannot do that because it doesn't have a partner. If there are three crossings, two of them can go away, but one will, be, one will always remain. There's an odd, odd number of them. So this crossing cannot go away. It has to stay there. It can also not be flux dependent, so it has to be flat. So the only thing it can do is, is just stay fixed. Well, it will do something like this. It will be very close to zero. Then here it will cross a little bit, go down, but you will hardly see that. And then there will be another one, also very close to zero, which will cross here. But if you don't look too carefully, you just see, you see one level pinned to zero. It's actually two levels. So where are these levels? Well, that's not rocket science, of course. Well, one will be on this side of the barrier, the other will on the other side of the barrier. They don't repel because there's this big barrier. So they don't see each other. And if you imagine straightening this out, then you have your wire with one zero mode, one zero level here and one zero level here. That's this thing which is called a zero mode, it's called the Majorana zero mode, and that's basically what much of what you'll be hearing about this time and also the other, the other lectures is going to, to cover. So two sides of the same coin, and um, now we'll investigate this in some model calculation and see some of the observable consequences.